There it is, 1964, the 17th of June. I'd better say hello first. Hello, Bill. Hello, Dan. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello, Johnny Chester. Hello, Dennis. Great to have you here. And, of course, music for Harvey Norman. Shop with confidence online, mobile and in-store. John, take us back 50 years. Oh, jeepers. Okay, well, um, I, I would have had on white underwear, um, burgundy socks, <laughs> because I... I was very colour coordinate in those days. I've sort of lost a bit of that now. <laughs> There's other things I haven't lost, unfortunately. Um, yeah, uh, I had um, I had my grey suit on, which was made for me by Ronald Thomas Taylor's in West Preston. Mm -hmm. No longer in business, unfortunately. Was it especially made for the Beatles tour? It was. Yep. It was made out of mohair and silk. It was a pale, pale grey. And I had burgundy... Cowboy bitch, or your elastic sided high top. The Beatles said to me, it Well, we've run out of time now for the segment, <laughs> Bill. How long are you going to? Anyway? Um, and uh, the Beatles, Beatles, <laughs> one of them, I forget who it was, came up and said, Look at those boots. They, they had winkle pickers, but they'd never seen like they were this long. Well, maybe that long. But uh, so I had them on and the, the white shirt with the burgundy tie. So I was colour coordinator. Schmicko. You betcha. What was it like when and when you found out you were going to be uh, working with the Beatles? Um, what was the sort of the emotion like? Well, it was it, it was pretty amazing because I I'd, I'd been in Brisbane for six weeks at that stage and got back from working up there, and the Beatles really had taken over on that. This was summer sixty three sixty four, mm -hmm. and the Beatles really started to kick goals at that point, and so I think when I left Brisbane. They had the top six records in the top 40, like the top six singles. And so I was hearing all the Beatles. There was a fellow up there named Tony McCarthy, I think his name was, and he was on 4BC, and, uh, which is your sister station up there, mm -hmm. as I understand. And Tony uh, became uh, like the Beatle expert up there. And he was wearing the Beatles suit. He brushed his hair forward. And I, I don't know if he's English, but you could where he was when he spoke to you. And... Um, so we got the Beatles, like a Beatle headquarters thing. So, of course, I get to Melbourne and I'd been home a few weeks and got the phone call from Dick Lane to come in and meet him, which I did. And uh, uh, he said, uh, John, uh, we've just signed this band from... Uh, he didn't even elaborate like that. He said, we've got to sign this band from, from England um, called the Beatles and... Uh, oh, we wondered if you'd like to be a part of the show. And I said, oh, that'd be fantastic. You know, they would, you know I said, I'll have to talk to the guys in the chessmen because they, um, you know, a couple of them have day jobs and they'll have to make arrangements so they can do the tour. But, you know, sounds wonderful. And he said, oh, uh, <coughs> no, uh, it doesn't include the chessmen. Uh, and I said, uh, how do you mean? He said, well, we've already booked the Phantoms and they will do their show and they'll back you and Johnny Devlin. And I went, um, well, I'm sorry, Mr. Lean, but if the band can't do it, then I don't want to do it. And he had this <laughs> incredulous what? look on his face. And he, he said, um, are you sure? And I said, yeah, well, I mean, we were, we're a unit. We work together, you know, and I said, they're the best rock and, ro rock and roll band in Australia. I'll do the best show I can with them. Uh, all due respect to the Phantoms. And he said, look, why don't you um, go and talk to the band and your family and you know, tell them what you think and you know, ask them. So I did, and they all called me an idiot. <laughs> and I said, what are you talking about? You don't... Even, the, even the band who were dipping out of it. And I said, well, you know, they knew my reasons and I... I I still feel that way. I like to do the best show I can, like you do. And um, anyway, they you know, jumped up and down lots and made lots of disparaging noises. Is that a good word, Bill? It is for you. Uh, it certainly is. I don't know what it means, but I'm hoping. Uh, anyway, so there we went. Uh, so, the, so you did it. Went back and said, yeah, I'll do it. And uh, that's how it worked. And you only got to do four, so four songs. You weren't on stage forever, but... You made the most out of those songs. You did something that was quite extraordinary, didn't you? In one of the songs, you did Peggy Lee's arrangement of, uh, of Fever. 
but you did something quite extraordinary with that song. I did on it the naked. Night. Yeah, I didn't tell you that. You weren't there. But... Oh, no, I wasn't there. <laughs> didn't no. you? And you got a reaction from John Lennon. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> I better explain. Uh, because of, you know, I mean, you can imagine you're doing the, a show with the Beatles, the biggest thing since sliced bread ever. And I thought, nobody's going to even know I'm on the show. You know, I didn't know what the reaction would be. I was quite prepared to go out and get thro things thrown at me. I didn't know. None of us did. And, of course, that wasn't the case. Everybody that did the show got well, very well treated by the audience. So, so I was thinking, what do I do to make people maybe remember something of me? Even if it's not me, they might remember something that I've done. In those days, you used the, the, the venue PA system. You used the venue uh, lighting. The, uh, the Beatles brought along their amps and their drum kit and their guitars, and that was it. There was no, no special effects or you know, production like we know it today. So um, I thought, what can I do? And I, So Peter McMurtry, a mate of mine who's still a mate of mine from grade three, uh, Mac had helped me with some lighting at the Preston Town Hall and St Cecilia's when I first started. And I said, this is what I want to do, mate. I said, can you get me some ultraviolet strips? Um, I need three of those and I need a red little spotlight with a little red gel on it, but something small that I can carry in a suitcase because I'll be carting it with me with my baggage in one hand and all that. And so we did Fever with the red glow on my face, the white gloves on the bass player and drummer, all lit up and nothing else on the stage. And it killed them? Well, it was just amazing, really. But then, as I said, even the lolly boys used to get a round of applause, so it was, you know. <laughs> uh, there would have been a lot of love in the room. Would you mind if we switched the lights out? Never know how much I love you.